This morning I was watching Stanton FPV on YouTube where he created a section of a wing um, 3D printed uh, of a similar style to the, the wonderful structures created by 3D Lab Print in his 3D printed planes. I have a couple of sections from 3D Lab Print here and you can see they are the internal structures are full of holes to keep the wing light. Um, the design is printed with one perimeter. Um, and the, it's a very intricate structure. Now what Stanton FPV had produced was uh, much simpler. And I had to go back in January uh, this year to uh, produce a similar uh, structure to what Stanton FPV had produced um, and what we've got here is my design for that. What Stanton FPV had produced was a single model. The way I was trying to do it was to have two models printed on top of each other. One of them was the aerofoil shape that I was producing and the second was the structure the internal structure and then I would print both models one on top of the other. Both would be printed hollow and as a result the internal structure would actually be printed and similar to what we see here with 3D lab prints things. So we have the internal structure being one model and the outer structure being the second model. This is a bit difficult to understand, so I have sort of redrawn it again. So the internal structure, well, one of the ribs is this line here. This represents the section that I'm printing, and I've decided that this section is going to have a cord of 200. And it's going to be a width of 150. So the airfoil, you sort of imagine the airfoil section is going to be something like that. Uh, not a very good airfoil section, but anyway, something like that. And we're looking at it straight down. So my design basically use this principle. Uh, this will be a stretched version of the airfoil we decide to use. So we need to work out how we stretch it. Now in this example, I have decided to have three of these going this direction. And that way. There will be other ones going the opposite direction to give it additional strength. But for this example, I'll show you how I work it out. I've decided I'm going to have three going through here. So that'll be three going through there and three coming through this way. Uh, if I have a cord of 200 and I have three going through this side, that means I'm dividing it into four. So each of these will have a size of 50. A quarter of the 200. Then using similar triangles, I can work out what X is. Because X over 200 so it's this triangle here. X over 200 will be the same ratio of this triangle. So that's 150 over 50. So X over 200 equals 150 over 50. 150 over 50 equals 3. So that means x equals 600. So you bring the 200 over to the other side. 3 times 200, 600. From that, I can work out what the hypotenuse of the triangle is, the length of the airfoil that I have to stretch it to, uh, using Pythagoras' theorem. So sum of this squared, the square root of the sum of this squared by this squared, so x squared plus 200, the square root of that, 
gives us a size of 632.5 for the chord of 200. I can then work out what the angle is by taking the arctan of the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is 200, adjacent is 150. Sorry, the adjacent is x, which gives us an angle of 18.5 degrees. The ratio of the hypotenuse to the chord is h over 200, which gives us 3.16. So I get a, an aerofoil section that I'm going to use to produce the wing to produce the section that I'm going to use to support that aerofoil section going this direction, 3 going through. I have to enlarge in this direction or in that direction uh, the length of the aerofoil by a factor of 3.16. So we go onto the internet and look for aerofoils. I selected a Clark Y. Uh, I remember it from my first forays into uh, model aircraft. A uh, simple, relatively flat bottomed aerofoil. So I downloaded an image of that, loaded it into Inkscape, which is a free vector graphics package. Uh, I then traced the vector around the image of the Clark Y aerofoil. Took a copy of that, pasted it into a new diagram and stretched out the aerofoil 3.16 times, which is the bottom image here. And as 3D lab print have holes in their internal structure to lighten it, I have drawn circles here. They will form the holes in the final structure. So the bottom one is the 3.15, 3.16 stretch and the length of the aerofoil. The top one is a smaller stretch because um, it's at a more obtuse angle. But you'll see that as we go on. I save this image out um, and we can load it into 123D design. So I go into import, save it as a sketch load it in and here we are this is our image i want to select these so that i can extrude them as this is the internal structure i only want it to be um, two extrusions wide so i'll extrude it to about 0 0.5 millimeters do the same with this. And this is the full airfoil and I want to stretch that to its full width, which is 150 millimeters. So now what I want to do is with the internal structure, I want to rotate it or 18.5 degrees, uh, copy and replicate it, and the same with the other one. That will give us basically the structure we see in front of us. We're seeing it at an angle here. If I go and show it from the top, you can see the crisscross interla interlacing of the two stretched aerofoils that form our internal structure. And then I extract a 150 millimeter section of it, which is this here. So I save this out as an STL file. I save the aerofoil out as an STL file. We can then load those into a slicer, one on top of the other, or I can align them here and uh, save them both in the same STL file. So if we go on to the slicing software, here we are. This is them in and aligned. You, it looks solid because, well, one of the models is a solid aerofoil. 
but when we prepare to print with um, a process that has no tops, no bottoms, and only a single outline layer, what we end up with is this. Basically a wing section, 150 millimeters, with that wholly internal structure that we were after. So if I peel it back, you can see how it's made up. There we are. That was how I designed the wing section. I haven't printed it out. Um, I did sort of choose this uh, airfoil because uh, I wanted to build the trainer, but I haven't taken it any further. The planes that 3D Lab print produce are just so much better than anything I could do. But as a design exercise, mathematical exercise, that was an interesting challenge. So if you want to produce it, the files are on Thingiverse. Feel free to use and modify as you see fit. Thank you for watching.